KJ Jefferson and the Arkansas Razorbacks have to be the surprise team of the year. Although they have lost their last three matchups at the time of recording, Jefferson has led the Razorbacks to some major wins this season. When he was recruited, KJ Jefferson was labeled the future of the Arkansas football program, but he almost didn't get his opportunity. That leaves the question, who is KJ Jefferson? In the Who Is series, we go through the backstories of up and coming collegiate pro athletes. If there's a player you want to see in future episodes, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. This video idea was requested by Matthew Bossart. KJ Jefferson was born on May 20th, 2001, and grew up in Sardis, Mississippi. Jefferson would be a four year varsity letter winner in both football and basketball at North Panola High School, where he would take over the starting quarterback job his freshman year, leading the team to a 5 and 6 record, which was par for the course for his high school at the time. He finished the year throwing for 1,040 yards, 17 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, while also rushing for 101 yards and 1 touchdown. As a sophomore, Jefferson led North Panola to a school record 10-3 record, throwing for 2,406 yards, 29 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, while also rushing for 580 yards and 8 more touchdowns on the ground. After his first game his junior year, KJ's mom would suffer a stroke. North Panola coach Carl Diffie told Arkansas Online, I remember taking him up to the hospital to see his mom on Monday. I had to go back for practice and he was like, Coach, I want to ride back for practice. With Jefferson's mother's blessing, Diffie agreed to let his star player practice. Diffie continued the story saying he went back to practice and the next day he went back up there and he got a ride back to practice. He did that all week and we got to the game. We're playing our biggest rival and we beat them 20 to 13. He had every reason to miss practice, and I would have let him miss and wouldn't have thought anything about it. I wouldn't hold anything against him for doing it, but he wasn't going to do that. He was going to be there. He put the team on his back with his legs and rushed for almost 240 yards that game and three touchdowns. He ran differently than I've ever seen him run, running over the top of guys and he would just hop back up. After the game, he was physically shaken, you could tell. I think that was the first game his mom had missed in a long time. Jefferson finished his junior year leading North Panola to a 13-1 record into the state semifinal game. Statistically, he threw for 3,028 yards, 36 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions, while also rushing for a career-high 1,325 yards and 8 touchdowns on the ground. During his senior year, North Panola went 12-2, losing in the 3A state semifinals once again. Jefferson threw for 3,180 yards, 37 passing touchdowns and 8 interceptions, while also rushing for 916 yards and 7 touchdowns on the ground. KJ played in the 2018 Alabama vs. Mississippi All-Star Game and in the International Bowl as well. He finished his high school career with a 40-12 record as a starter, accumulating 9,654 passing yards and 119 touchdowns while rushing for 2,922 yards and 24 touchdowns on the ground. Coming out of high school according to 24-7 Sports Composite, KJ Jefferson was a four-star recruit who's the 12th best dual threat quarterback, 14th best player in Mississippi, and 331st best player in his class. He received over 13 different Division I offers from the likes of Arkansas, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, and Texas A&M. Jefferson would visit Fayetteville in March and April his junior year and announce his decision after his second visit, telling NWA Online, I knew it was Arkansas after my second visit up there and after I visited the spring game. I brought my mom out and all she talked about was Arkansas, Arkansas, Arkansas. She was saying how she had a great time there. They made sure we were okay. It was just the love she got. Jefferson's high school coach told Arkansas.com they recruited him across the board. Their entire program recruited KJ. It wasn't just one coach. It wasn't just a couple of coaches. It was every single person on staff who made sure they formed a relationship with him and made him feel comfortable. A lot of those other guys that committed with KJ, he was able to form a relationship with. The Arkansas fan base embraced Jefferson's commitment, commenting and retweeting on every one of his posts and cheering his name whenever he was at a restaurant. After committing, Jefferson focused on recruiting other players to the Razorbacks as well. Although there were people who tried to pressure Jefferson to change his commitment, KJ never wavered and signed with the Razorbacks. When KJ Jefferson got to Arkansas, he got right to work. He adjusted to the college life with the rest of his fellow freshmen. Veteran quarterbacks Ben Hicks and Nick Starkle would take Jefferson under their wing when he arrived. Jefferson spoke on his relationship with them saying, They've been a lot of help because they're upperclassmen and they know what it's like to be a freshman and the obstacles you go through. Learning different plays and getting into the playbook and learning how to watch film. They've been real helpful. I can call them anytime I have a question. At the same time though, 
Jefferson worried he wasn't fit for the SEC and feared it was too fast for him as he waited for his opportunity. He bulked out from 215 to 245 as well. Arkansas's 2019 season was a season many wanted to forget. The fan base wanted Jefferson to take over the reins of the offense and during the homecoming game against Mississippi State, KJ would make his debut as the fan base broke out in cheers. At the time, the Razorbacks were 2-7 and 0-6 and and in SEC play. Arkansas had played Hicks, Starkle, and redshirt freshman John Stephen Jones, who Jefferson came in for throughout the season. On his first play, Jefferson took the ball up the middle for 21 yards, running over a Bulldogs defender in the process. The play got the fans on their feet, cheering as they witnessed the future of the Razorbacks program. His first pass play was a beautiful 32-yard pass to Traylon Burks near the sideline. Although the Razorbacks were down 48-17, it felt like they had momentum and hope back to the program. The following play, he scored on a QB keeper for the first career touchdown and the crowd went wild, although they were down 48-24. He took the Razorbacks on a four-play, 75-yard scoring drive, and people were calling him a star already. After the game, head coach Chad Morris was asked why he hadn't played Jefferson earlier in the season, who was on the scout team for most of the season. Morris responded, I don't have any regrets of not playing him earlier in the season. I thought he played well today. We kept it as simple as possible with him, but I thought he did a really good job. Obviously, he let us down, had a big run, and scored a touchdown. It was a pretty impressive first drive. The following week, Jefferson played 40 snaps against Western Kentucky, throwing for 60 yards and running for 32 yards and a touchdown. The following game, he made his first collegiate start against LSU in Baton Rouge, the national championship winning LSU team, might I add, throwing for 105 passing yards, the first time in over a month at the time, a quarterback had thrown for over 100 passing yards in a game. Going to the 2020 season, Felipe Franks would transfer to Arkansas from Florida and take over the starting quarterback job with a brand new head coach. Jefferson knew Franks was there for one year and learned under the veteran. David Ubin from The Athletic writes, Franks and Jefferson would sit in the film room and Franks would open Jefferson's eyes to see things an inexperienced quarterback couldn't. Franks would pause film mid-play and ask Jefferson where the ball should go. If he was wrong, Franks would explain why it should go elsewhere, reiterating the principles of the offense they were both learning. Franks explained how to handle awkward situations and embrace leadership, even if it meant trading wins and respect for being liked, at least in the moment. Jefferson still hears Franks' voice when he is watching film today. According to Franks, Jefferson was always ready to play, and the two built a strong relationship. Jefferson would start against Missouri with Franks out with a rib injury and said he was trying to get the win for his injured teammate. He finished the game accounting for over 306 yards and four total touchdowns in a close loss. Going into the game, Pittman was recruiting a transfer portal quarterback, but after the game, he knew he had his quarterback on his roster already. Going into the 2021 season, Jefferson had developed confidence in his ability and had become a team leader. Jefferson led Arkansas to a 4-0 start this season, and ranking as high as number 8 in the nation, before hitting a brutal three-game stretch at Georgia and Ole Miss and home against Auburn, and now the Razorbacks sit at 4-3. Jefferson has looked good this season, throwing for 1,463 yards, 11 touchdowns and 3 interceptions, also rushing for 386 yards and 5 touchdowns through 7 games. The Razorbacks will look to get back to their winning ways against Arkansas Pine Bluff this weekend, and Jefferson looks to build on his success this season. What do you think? How good is KJ Jefferson? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.